drew condemnation from Malacanang and described the hacking of the website as an act of vandalism that does not win them any sympathy. The palace assured no sensitive materials were lifted from the vandalized websites. More from Rocky Ignacio. Mal Malacanang condemned the hacking of online portals of the Banco Central of Filipinas, MWSS, and five other government websites. The defacement of the website was allegedly in protest against the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Communication Secretary Vicky Carandang described the incident as an act of Sorry, vandalism that does not win them any sympathy. The hacker identified himself as anonymous <laughs> Philippines. Presidential spokesperson Edwin Lasherda stressed groups protesting the law should bring their complaints before the proper venue rather than hacking government websites. Well, it won't win them brownie points if that's what they're doing. I think the better venue for them is to really uh, show their protest in a proper form rather than hacking a government website or government websites. Let's share the claim the law is not meant to suppress freedom of expression in cyberspace. While the government recognized the freedom to express, all should be reminded that there should be responsibilities attached into it. The palace issued a statement amidst fear that the anti-cyber crime act will be used against those critical of the administration. So if we can express ourselves uh, in a decent manner. If you want to criticize, we can criticize without getting to licentious. Yun lang ang, kasi ang concerns lang talaga. There should be responsibilities. Freedom is there. We recognize the freedom to express oneself. But there should be, we should be reminded that uh, the responsibilities which are present already in media, in radio, in TV should also be present in cyberspace. There should be no fear of express, expressing oneself, I think. That's the most important. Meanwhile, Malacanian said that the Department of Science and Technology will beef up the firewall of government websites. Lasherda stressed, after the hacking incident, there is a need for the government to increase security in their websites. That's why there is a coordination with DOS po. And uh, yung mga iba mga agencies po, medyo maayos po ang, maayos po ang kanilang firewall. For instance, dito po sa atin, ang um, PCDSP o official cassette, they, somebody tried to do a denial service attack against that uh, the official gazette website. I think they failed to do that. So some of them, and because of the recent past, the DOSC has been going to the various agencies and making sure that the websites are properly firewalled. So again, this is a continuing uh, campaign. Pinapatibay ang ating mga work websites. For the People's Television, Rocky National. Meanwhile, several senators see certain provisions of the anti-cybercrime law as unconstitutional. These include the provision on online libel, the authority given to the Department of Justice to block websites, even without a court review and the warrantless monitoring of electronic data. More from Bianca Piedad. October 5, San Miguel Corporation will redeem all of the shares of the CIIF, which amounts to 56 billion pesos for 750 million preferred shares of stocks owned by the Olmis Group, which invested the Coco Levy Fund paid for and owned by coconut farmers in the country. The cost of one share is 75 pesos. Another 13 bit pesos in dividends held in escrow will also be turned over to government. This comes after the Supreme Court issued a ruling sustaining an earlier decision in January of this year that the said shares belongs to government held in trust for the coconut farmers. Now that the Supreme Court has ruled on it with finality, then the money should now be um, placed in an escrow account and that it will be safeguarded. We are awaiting the passage of a law. Here's Bianca Piedad for the report earlier. Senators Chafiso Gingona III and Francis Cheese Escudero see eye to eye on the need to re examine some of the provisions of Republic Act 10175 or the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Senator Gingona has filed a petition before the Supreme Court challenging some of the so called dubious provisions of the Republic Act. The lawmaker says he seeks to rectify the ambiguous and repressive provision of the law on libel. The law, the senator furthers, has no clear-cut definition of the crime and would render anyone who airs criticisms vulnerable to being indiscriminately sued. Gingona adds that it also curtails the freedom of the press and of expression. 
The provision on criminal liability on online libel is also unfair, Incona says. Senator Escudero meanwhile agrees saying the law should be reviewed and that the penalty for online libel should be reduced to a civil liability. Under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act, print media libel carries the punishment of four years and two months of imprisonment while online libel has the penalty of 12-year prison term. Some groups who also oppose this are set to carry on their protest on Tuesday while the Supreme Court magistrates conduct the unbound meeting. For People's Television, Bianca Piedad. It was unexpected, but it happened. Hackers hit the website of the Banco Central and other government offices. What could be the reasons why the attack on the web? Is it in protest of the new cybercrime law? If it is, is this the best way to express one's concern? And joining us tonight to explain today's event is engineer Dennis Villorente, executive director of the DOST Advanced Science and Techno Technology Institute and the head of the National Computer Center. Good evening. So can you just explain how the hacking happened in simple language for the benefit of, of our viewers? What, what is done to hack a certain website? Basically, a website is a computer program which is running on a computer. And uh, the computer is connected to the internet, which is a public network. So a lot of people, so for everyone who has an internet access, basically can access a website. Uh, so uh, when, when a website is hacked, basically they... The, the, the hacker is able to enter through uh, uh, different means and change certain files in the computer such that uh, the, the, the website or the content on the website uh, is changed. What kind of uh, impact does this have on these websites in terms of um, its security features and now its reliability in terms of the information it has on the website? Uh, Essentially, um, the way that uh, we restore it is, you know, we, we have to look into the system how the hacker was able to enter and change uh, certain codes and uh, fix that and, and, and so secure the website itself. So what role does the DOST have, especially your um, department, in terms of monitoring or um, providing um, advice on security features for these websites of the government agencies? Yeah, I, I'm with the ICT office, which is an office under the Department of Science and Technology. And we are the primary agency of government in charge of ICT. Um, so right now we are looking at building up our facilities such that uh, we are able to host uh, government websites because the situation now is that uh, a lot of government agencies are hosting their own websites in bar spaces, in their own offices, or hosted outside. And it's really very difficult uh, to secure all of these sites, especially since uh, in many cases, the uh, people who run this are not, not really uh, experts or are not really full-time uh, monitoring these websites. And, and, and so, um, our role is to be able to assist them and secure uh, these kinds of facilities. Um, the way to do it is, of course, to layer in the security. So not just uh, securing the website, but also providing um, facilities such as uh, firewalls and making sure that uh, these are all updated because um, you know it's, it's uh, a race. Uh, certain uh, things are found out, so certain bugs or uh, problems are found out and you have to uh, be proactive in fixing this so that uh, you avoid uh, these kinds of uh, intrusions. So with regards to the hackers, how should we deal with them? Um, does the cybercrime law provide sanctions and penalties? If not, what law provides for sanctions um, when these things happen? Yes, the cybercrime prevention law already provides uh, these sanctions uh, this is called an authorized access or intrusion. Um, the um, implementing rules and regulations are not yet out, so that has to be um, finalized uh, so that uh, then we can uh, uh, use this against uh, these kinds of people. Yeah. So are there penalties right now in place or is this still uh, in the drawing board? Yes, it is in the law. So, um, can you 
specify sir what kind of penalties um, that the hackers can 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 what kind of rep reprimand if they get reprimanded or what kind of penalties can you um, sanction these hackers? Uh, well, I'm I'm not really uh, uh, updated on the, the text of the law, but uh, uh, it provides for the appropriate sanctions. Sir, if this is a protest against a cybercrime law, in your opinion, is there a need to amend certain provisions? Because the main concern is it sends signals that it restricts freedom of expression. Yeah, I believe that is properly addressed to our legislation. Uh, you know, um, these uh, people are sending a message uh, that they are against certain things in the Cybercrime Prevention Act. And I believe uh, the appropriate uh, venues for those are uh, the Supreme Court or to go to the to our Congress uh, to be able to air their, uh, you know, um, grievances or their uh, sentiment and, and perhaps an amendatory law can be passed. So since you're the head of the National Computer Center, what are the most common irregularities on the web that can be considered as crimes. Did your office provide inputs to the cybercrime law? Uh, yes, we did. And uh, these are all contained in the law. Um, many of these are vandalism or unauthorized access. But the more serious would be uh, those which involve financial, you know, um, financial, well, with a, a cost already. Like uh, now, online banking is getting to be more popular. <coughs> and uh, things like identity theft or uh, theft of credit card information uh, these are the things uh, you know that, that, that are more serious um, so theft so of uh, yeah. information yeah. and so on. so with all that um, the security uh, people are getting to be a little bit more weary on the internet because of um, security features are a little bit lax what, what is the DOST doing in terms of providing um, more advice or um, any any more programs in, for these uh, website, government agency website, for them to become more secured? Yeah, I, be, I believe uh, we need to be educating more our uh, IT people in government um, and then providing for advisories, uh, what is happening uh, out there, what are the threats. Uh, providing for the appropriate assistance in terms of infrastructure so that they can uh, provide uh, their services online in a secure manner. And we are trying to address all of these things with uh, uh, things like uh, providing for a public key infrastructure uh, so that, uh, that you can have an, an appropriate security framework uh, and, and so on. So does your office have enough manpower or IT personnel to monitor all these websites to make sure that they are secure, their firewalls, and all these things that need um, that a website needs to be actually secured. Because these are government um, uh, websites, and pe uh, a lot of our viewers and uh, people look to these websites for a lot of information. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you know, resources are always you know, limited in government, and there are a lot of priorities, but. Uh, of course, uh, that is not an excuse. We have to really be very serious about uh, responding to this, being more proactive. But right now, government has not really been, you know, uh, be, be proactive in terms of this. But uh, since a lot of uh, you know uh, activities are now being done in cyberspace, and that is the direction to be able to leverage technology. Uh, and improve our economy, our social life. Uh, so we should be looking and providing more resources to fix all of these things and address these concerns. Okay, on that note, thank you very much, sir, for joining us tonight. That was engineer Dennis Villorente of the DOST, head of the National Computer Center. And tonight, allegedly.